Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, May 16th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. For about uh, four months now, Jan has been tracking uh, some interesting emails that claim to come from Facebook. Of course, they're not from Facebook. They're essentially phishing emails with a couple sort of interesting artifacts. Uh, first of all, the from address is just the string Facebook, not a valid email address, just essentially the name. Now, typically you do have a name and an email address, but here the email address part is just left blank. Maybe this is supposed to help with some of the sort of DKIM SPF uh, like uh, filters. Then the links are also a little bit odd in that uh, many of the links are mail to links. So if the user clicks on them, they're not being sent to a particular web page. Instead, the email client opens a new window and then attempts uh, to send an email. Of course, the user still has to actually send the email. The email is not sent automatically. Could be where the attacker is maybe trying to sort of communicate with the victim here, maybe hoping the victim would ask for help. And then, of course, the attacker would like to supply that help. But uh, what's the most interesting part of this otherwise not really that super remarkable uh, phishing email is that the attacker apparently just copy pasted a lot of the content from an actual Facebook email. Of course, that makes uh, the email more plausible, makes it easier to actually have the right layout and everything. But looks like as part of this, the attacker also copied some specific unique uh, identifiers that are now present in the email, which may of course help identify the actual origin of these phishing emails. And yesterday I mentioned that Intel released updates to the microcode to a range of its CPUs. Well, part of the note with the microcode update was that uh, these updates uh, do fix a security update for the Intel SANA. Wasn't really clear what the update was really about, so Foronix uh, did publish about it, and that's what I mentioned yesterday. The register is now writing that they actually got a response from Intel saying that uh, this update does not contain any security updates, and denote Intel SANA, well basically NA not available, means that uh, there is no, or there is no applicable uh, security update. A little bit odd, uh, but uh, yeah, so security updates for Intel SANA, what it really refers to is that there is no update. Weird way of phrasing it, uh, just want to make that uh, clear that this is nothing that you sort of need to patch because it's a security update. And we had in the past numerous uh, cases where fake uh, crypto coin wallets uh, were being offered uh, via various app stores and such in order to trick uh, victims to deposit their coins in these fake crypto coin wallets, which then, of course, would leak secret keys to an attacker. Now, pulling this off uh, with uh, software crypto coin wallets is uh, pretty straightforward. It just needs a gullible victim here to install your fake wallet. But apparently, attackers are also doing this with hardware wallets. The target here appears to be Trezor, which is a very popular hardware wallet where attackers are essentially coming up sort of with lookalike hardware wallets and then trick victims into purchasing them. Sadly, they pretty much look identical to the real thing. The only way you can sort of tell them apart is that this particular fake wallet used a bootloader version 204 that doesn't exist for the real wallet. Actually, a changelog at Tracer states that they skipped this particular version 204 because it had been used for some of these fake devices. And the reason they look so very close to the real thing is that uh, they actually are essentially modified real uh, Trezor wallets. They just had some of the internal components replaced. And in vulnerability news, uh, there is a recently patched vulnerability in TP-Link Archer 
AX21. It's a command injection vulnerability that is, according to FortiGuard Labs, now being exploited. That's CVE 2023-1389. And again, a patch is available. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.